Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Fabian Iliaster. Tonight, I will be doing a reread of a previous post, and I'll be trying to do it in one complete shot. Without further ado, let us begin. The Day the Dragon Knelt by Thavian Iliaster I have felt these feelings before. I have felt overwhelming surgeons. It would be either raw power or an enveloping warmth. This time was different, however. Stan, sit, kneel. Stan, sit, kneel. This is what I did. This is what I've been doing. This is what I was doing. It is what I have been doing. Today was not that day, however. It's been forever since I returned. Too long. The other times I have returned, I stayed a bit late afterwards. This time, I must have had tears in my eyes. Why, you may ask. Tears from my own ineptitude. I was tired of being tired. I was exhausted of being the sluggard. I felt ashamed, and I carried that constant burden with me. Even when I would try and attempt to get it done, the ineptitude would remain. It was ever-bearing, and was just as constant as planks. Then we stood. The books were laid out before us. Then we turned and walked out. Not out of the house. We walked towards the altar. The offerings had been made. The blood of the lamb had permeated the room. Then I felt it. To me, from my perspective, everything changed that day. In that time... At that very moment. The day was bright, and the sun was in the middle of the sky. The painted glass allowed in more than ample light. The candles made the place brighter still. Nevertheless, walking towards the altar, I was transported, yet remained in the same place. I was in the house. Then I entered the house. It was dark. Darkness all around me, except for in front of me, shining down at an angle, and it seemed to refract as if the most perfect diamonds were within it. Piercing, it was. There were blades of light stabbing me and shining through. I was not hurt, I was not cut, nor was I afraid, overwhelmed, or bewildered. I was enveloped, wrapped, and in recognition. I would say in awe, but even the fullest dictionary containing every conceivable word from all possible languages could not describe this sensation, this event, this moment, this happening. Behind me was the king. Not the king, but the king. The arch. Behind me, not in fear, not being overwhelmed, but like me in recognition of the power in front of us, the arch splayed out. In recognition, the arch bent down. In recognition, the arch touched the ground. Where was the ground? That's a difficult question. I would say it's below my feet. But in total darkness and with this light, I couldn't say. Hind feet, tail elongated and curled, claws from its hands upon the ground, and its wings spread out. Was it trying to protect itself from the light? 
Was it in pain? Why was it doing this? Why? It did this not out of fear. It did this not out of being overwhelmed. It did this n- not out of being in awe. It did this not out of being persecuted. It did this in respect, in reverence, in honor. It did this in subservience. The Red Dragon, the Archfiend, the being who was eternally intertwined with me and who would constantly be linked by chains. It would drag me. I would rein it in. This was a constant battle. There is no fighting in the house. The chains were not there. The chains must have evaporated, dispelled, disappeared. There are no chains. All are free. Free to either come or leave, to stay or go, to follow or abandon. The Red Dragon, the archfiend that had been a part of me for so long, had knelt, had bowed, had shown respect, and above all, had become subservient. I do not know the reason for the light. The light escapes me as it overflows me. The light compelled me to walk forward. I walked. The light showed me what I needed to see. I had not lost my sight, but my vision. The light helped me to regain that. Still, I did not see the dragon kneel. All I had to do was feel it. My back was turned towards the red dragon. But I sensed it. Though it was made to crawl on its belly and eat dust, No dust stirred when it spread its wings. Why was it in the form of the red dragon, the archfiend? It had fought in this form before. Was it only fitting for such a reunion? Was it only showing respect in the form it had previously rebelled in? I do not know. I do know that the red dragon, the archfiend, was on its toes, its hands, its knees, and that its muzzle pointed down. Be it my own imagination, be it my own inspiration, be it my desire to wish for change, to not succumb to being a sluggard of the earth for all the days of my life, with which I would henceforth become a slave to others out of necessity. That image is burned into my head as a cattle has a brand burned into its hide. Not just within my mind. I felt that image within my heart, within my essence of being who I am. Why did it appear in the image that I saw? I was told that out of their power, out of their majesty, for being created by the divine creator. They take forms that we can handle. I foresaw a form of the red dragon, the archfiend, that I understood. It was a form that I was familiar with. It was a form that I have seen myself having ties to. I sense that is the reason why I saw it in this form. When it comes to the subservience of the divine creator, I could not see the form of the divine creator. What I did bear witness to was the radiance, the power, the eminence of the said glory. It escapes me because I am finite. My words that I type here are incapable of grasping the entirety of that which I had felt. Even if I were to create such a way in which you could experience the bodily sensations, the mental image, and the spiritual awakening that I had in such a moment, it would pale in comparison to what I had encountered. Yet, 
and my finiteness. Even I know that I am limited in my ability to experience the fullness of said glory. As I explained, this was the day the dragon knelt. Credits. Thank you for listening. If you'd like this, then hopefully I will do some more rereads in the future and read more stories to you as they come to mind. This has been Thavian Iliaster, and please search for me on vocal media. Bye bye now.